What got me into photography was uh, when I got my first camera at the age of four, when my parents got it for, I think it was my birthday. A little yellow 35mm camera that came out with me everywhere I went. I've actually still got some of the photos today. I think without having that, I wouldn't have got the interest for photography. But the older I got, I um, was getting more and more interested and, more, and wanted to get more creative. So at the age of 12, I, uh, went, I saved up my pocket money. I got myself a Canon uh, 35mm film camera, uh, SLR. Yeah, it's something really quite special for me and um, really natural and it's something that I don't think I could live without it really in my life. It's helped me in so many levels uh, with my anxiety, my depression, and it's actually saved my life on multiple occasions. When I get too overwhelmed by what goes on around me and um, what I've got to do and I'm not doing my photography at that time, I start to feel a bit suicidal, I start to get really um, in a dark place. But as soon as I get my camera out and just go into location, um, I just lose all of that and I'm just so immersed in what I'm doing. Um, and then when I come back, I'm just fresh and free and I'm focused once again. It really is an expensive form of therapy, but I really enjoy what I do. I love the technical aspect, I love the way I shoot, so yeah, and I love, I love learning and trying something new each time. The arts is super important for, for our mental health. You know, we, we saw this in the last year with COVID when we, last couple of years now, <laughs> with COVID where we're locked down. It's the arts that we reached out for and music and creativity to you know, help us feel connected with all of society. So it is important that we don't disconnect particular groups, you know, who approach the world in different ways. Nature is something that makes me really relaxed and uh, something I enjoy. I just feel at one with nature. I've tried to photograph in busy places like the city and I just feel like I don't belong. It's just so much easier, you know, me going out into the landscape, I can just look and observe and um, just see what's going on and look um, and then capture it with my camera. Where uh, going out um, and meeting people, there's just so many things I've got to do. I've got a mask. Um, masking is uh, basically where I've got to think about how I'm breathing, how I'm standing, uh, um, facial expressions when I'm looking at people as well. So you'll, look, you'll see me, I'm looking right down here on this jetty, at this little patch and um, maybe some of the screws here, I'm just looking on there. And that allows me to really think about what I'm saying. Um, but it's just so hard for me to look at someone's face or look at the camera here actually. Um, and um, yeah, I, and then I've also got to, worry, I've got to worry about food and everything. And there's so many layers, so many factors that um, people who are not on the spectrum just take for granted and I wish I had that um, but also I've got sensory issue issues as well. I see things in a, such, a, um, such a fine way and uh, what I see is the individual uh, reeds and the, and the colours. You can, I can see the oranges and I see the bits of yellow just above the water. Um, I can see the way the reeds are actually uh, going off to the side here um, and seeing the way they actually flow. The different shades of green as well. Uh, the contrast and how, and also how the layers are as well. It can be so overwhelming and so tiring, but most of the time it's actually really quite relaxing as well because I'm actually enjoying the scenes and seeing it in more detail than how everyone else will see it. Through his photography, he can show us the beauty of those things that we might just skim over or, or not even see. So I think, you know, Simon will show us the beauty of the world through photography. I think Dawn will show us the beauty um, through music and, and her creative practice as well. And I think you bring those two things together and you just make magic. We're all pretending to be typical because that's the way humans go. We want, you know, strength in numbers. And so the non-compliant, well, kill. <laughs> We wanted to do a collaboration and we wanted to bring um, an artist uh, and a different art form into the equation. Serendipitously, I just came across the work of Dawn Joy Leong and realised that uh, not only was she an amazing musician and sound artist, but she also had performance sensibilities, which is my art form. Suzanne Inglebrit uh, told me that I'm going to be working with a um, and a composer um, to create the music for my artwork uh, to go along with the slideshow. At first I think Simon and Suzanne heard my songs and so they liked the songs and so they thought that I would use, you know, and I thought so too, but when I saw Simon's photographs, I felt that restricting the response to words, however meaningful the words may be, 
was not doing the whole experience any justice. Music is sound. So it's music, not just the birds, but there's music in the trees, there's music in the way we shuffle along. You know, everybody's footsteps um, sound different. We knew that we were going to connect and have a story, story tell, and we just got on so well. We kind of like just understood. So I, I don't talk very much with uh, Simon. You know, he's, we, we text by Instagram. She's in Singapore, we're in Perth. I didn't feel like we got that, sep that um, separation and distance. It just felt natural and felt like she was sitting right next to me, basically. It's very comfortable for me to communicate with a fellow autistic artist because there's not a lot of explaining to do. And I, I'm really bad at explaining. I told her to be free flowing with my work. Just look at it and see how you feel and, and what you get from it. And what she was saying about my images and, uh, um, was just perfect because I, I was just going, yes, yes, yes. That is exactly how I wanted to portray the scene. And she was just getting it. And it's just, it's just perfect. I focus on the senses because that's the way I experience the world. That's the way I'd like to communicate. I also found out she was uh, diagnosed later in life, the same as me. So we've all sort of, we've gone through the same, very similar struggles in life. She's really just created the atmosphere and really brought the images to life. Um, so I'm really, I really appreciate her amazing talent and her efforts. I want to invite people um, to partake of my sensory thinking and communication. So I think through my senses, I communicate best through my senses. I think what we can all learn from this is the depth of feeling and sensitivity that neurodiverse art autistic artists have. They just see the world, they hear the world, they sense the world in a far deeper way than, than most of us do. What I've learned from um, the past four years since I got diagnosed was a lot of people, bubble people who are on the spectrum, they, they don't want to take, they allow them to take risks. They want to keep them cocooning in a safe place. And I'm actually glad I was diagnosed later in life because I've done uh, all different types of jobs. And I think without those, uh, those jobs, I wouldn't have um, been able to be the person I am and have the confidence and have the skills in life to do what I'm doing today. There's probably people in this room who don't actually have a diagnosis in autism, probably don't even know they're, they're autistic. And um, I quite like that, you know. So one other side of this project is we are looking into, you know, the academic research into neurodiverse creativity and there's <laughs> tons of creativity out there. And I guess what, you know, is preventing us from experiencing that or understanding that it's there or going and seeing it in galleries is this stereotype that it does not exist. And through sense and sensitivity, we're showing that it does exist. And people who are neurodiverse can go out and take a picture of something and, you know, see something more in that than, you know, somebody else would. The exhibition almost leverages on work we've done in research in the past, because a lot of our research actually focuses on the strengths of autistic individuals, um, identifying those and using those in interventions and programs. So that's kind of part of what the exhibition is about. But I think the more we engage with neurodiverse individuals and, and understand their strengths, we find better, more, more um, effective ways to um, channel their strengths and channel their talents to actually you know, improve their outcomes and, and give them a, a place to shine and, and show the world that what they're really able to do. This whole thing is about diversity. The exhibition is about diversity. So I thought, why not have diversity with my work? And that is what I've done. And the way they see the world, the way they move through the world might be a little bit different, but you know, they've, they've now using artistic expression to tell us something about that. And it's really great for us to be able to experience that and that collaboration too. I think that having the opportunity to put on this exhibition through the support of the university and making it happen has been an amazing platform. And, and I think, you know, without the support of Curtin in doing that and giving us the funds to put this exhibition together, we wouldn't be able to tell this really important story that's important to both Simon and Dawn as individuals, but important to our community, important to our research, and important to the way that universities interact with our community. Neurodiversity is just a fact that humanity is made up of many different kinds of minds and some of the minds are like Simon's and mine 
Really hope what me and Dawn have achieved will allow uh, or will uh, encourage um, other people on the spectrum to get out there and create some works of art. Because it is really an, an amazing feeling to f have something that you've created that you can actually share with the world. And it's a great way of actually connecting with people as well. It really uh, breaks down those barriers that we often uh, find really challenging. And uh, when you uh, share something that you've created, you have a story, you, uh, you uh, completely forget about you having autism basically. You feel normal and uh, you can really easily connect with people uh, through art. And it really gives you a really, sense, a really good sense of uh, achievement and it really helps with your self-confidence as well.